Hello class, my name is Rose Masibili. I'll be taking you through BAF 2102, which is cost accounting, through this class, the introductory bit of it. Now, as a prerequisite to cost accounting, you're supposed to have covered financial accounting 1, BAF 1101, and financial accounting 2, BAF 1102. At the beginning of this course, what is supposed to happen is that we are supposed to understand the relationship between the financial accounting and the cost accounting. And afterwards, we are also going to be able to look at management accounting. When you are doing financial accounting, what happens is that we are dealing with historical records. The historical records were to enable us to determine whether a firm or an organization has made a profit or a loss at the end of the financial year. So we looked at the journals and the source documents, prepared the ledgers, and at the end of the day prepared the profit and loss account. That is the uniqueness about the financial accounting, where we are also able to look at the principles and the concepts that form the basis of all the accounting that we are going to be doing henceforth. So now for cost accounting, it basically deals with the current issues of an organization. Remember, under financial accounting, we're looking at the historical bit to, rem to determine whether we are making a profit or a loss. Cost accounting is going to help us to break down the processes in an organization so that at each stage you're able to determine whether the organization, how the organization is performing, how it's using its resources. And then at the end of the day, we'll be able to advise management and we are able to make the proper decisions. So as we go ahead, we'll need to be able to appreciate what is the actual difference between cost accounting and financial accounting. So as we begin in the first topic, we'll be looking at the introduction to cost accounting, what is cost and what is cost accounting, the objectives of cost accounting, some of the terminologies we'll be using in this course, and the classifications of costs and the calculation of various costs. So to begin with, what is a cost? Basically, when we are talking about a cost, it's an expense that you're going to undertake in the production of a particular product. You see, by the time you're producing a product, there are various costs that you're going to incur in terms of the purchasing of the raw materials, the labor that you're going to be incurring, the final products, packaging, and maybe transportation to the final uh, consumer. That is basically what the cost is going to be, what cost, cost basically means. And that's why you're saying that it's the amount of expenditure incurred or attributable to a given thing. This can be a commodity in terms of a good or a service. So, and now when we have understood what a cost is, basically what is cost accounting? So in cost accounting, you're going to be taking into account each and every material, each and every, uh, each and every material labor that you're going to be using to produce a particular commodity. So we are going to be recording it, we'll classify and summarize that at the end of the day we are able to determine the total cost of a commodity. And this cost accounting is going to help us in planning, in controlling. So when you're planning, basically you want to find out uh, how much of the raw material will I use. When you're controlling, you'll be able to tell whether you're actually wasting or you're using it, uh, you're using it appropriately. And if there are any wastes, how can you be able to take control to ensure that there are no wastes, that at the end of the day you're able to minimize costs and maximize the profits of an organization. That's why you're saying that it, your cost accounting will be involved the recording, the classifying, the summarizing, and the cost determination of products, of cost of products and services. So when we do this, we'll be able to plan and control in order to reduce costs. And then the report that we're going to generate is going to help management make decisions. So what are the objectives of cost accounting? Ascertaining costs. Ascertaining cost is basically determining costs. At the beginning, I said that when you are uh, producing a product or a service, you will going to incur various types of costs. Whether it is the raw material you're buying, whether it's the machinery that will be used to produce the good or the service, whether it is the labor that you're going to incur in order to produce the final product. So we need to determine which are these costs and to what extent does this cost uh, contribute to the final cost of a product or a service. The next thing we are going to do is that we are going to estimate costs. In estimation of costs, basically you're going to be planning. Like um, I, I need to I need to produce or I need to manufacture a particular commodity, what are the tentative costs that I'm going to incur? And then from there, I'll be able to make a decision on uh, the amount of funds that I need, the amount of labor or people that I need to employ or the raw materials that I will need to use. The next objective is cost control. What do we mean by control? Basically, when you're starting any activity, you plan. You have an objective that you need to achieve. And then you set out the steps in which you're going to achieve this objective. 
At the end of the day, it comes when you have started implementing the objective. You come to a place where you need to evaluate to determine whether you are actually achieving that objective. And that's where control comes in, that you compare your objectives vis-a-vis -vis the actual production, and then you're able to tell, am I going as per my objectives and if not what are the corrective actions that I'm supposed to take in order to achieve my objective and in our case in cost accounting will be probably uh, reduce costs reduce wastage or just maximize the output based on the raw materials or the materials that we are having that is basically what cost control is that you're evaluating to find out whether you're achieving your goals and at the end of the and the end of uh, in the process of controlling you need to take um, the corrective action that's what we are calling cost control and in the corrective action what will it entail the next thing is what we are calling the cost reduction that in cost accounting the main objective is to minimize costs in order to maximize profits so how will you re reduce costs if for example you're having uh, in, an, in a, you're having a bakery and probably you're having five bakers at a particular time and probably the number of cakes or the number of pastries you're producing at that time is that is lower yet you're paying this ba these bakers the same amount at every instance so when production is low what happens you would prefer to reduce the number of employees that you're having and produce the same quantity of a commodity so that you're able to maintain your profits at a particular level that's basically what we mean by cost reduction the next objective of cost accounting is determining the selling price. When you're determining the price of a commodity that you want to sell, you have to take into account the total cost that you have incurred. And as we go ahead, we are going to be looking at the types of costs. So after you determine the total cost that you have incurred, you need to add a markup. The markup basically determines the profits that you expect to earn. And then when we add the total cost plus the markup, which is our profit, then we are going to be able to determine the selling price of a particular commodity. That's what we call by determining the selling price. And then the other one will be facilitation, the preparation of financial and other statements. So we are going to, some of the financial statements you'll be looking at is probably just a cost statement to show the total cost that a, a commodity is being produced at. Probably you'll also be able to prepare a budget using the information that you're having. And then the last objective of cost accounting will be providing a basis for operating policy. That all this information we are collecting in the process of producing these records should be able to contribute to management's decision making. And that's where the policies come in. So as we go ahead, there are terminologies that we are going to be using. The first one, I think we had already looked at it, of what is cost. Basically, it's the expenditure you're incurring. Uh, in terms of the materials or the labor or any other thing that can be attributed to the commodity or the service that you're providing. And then costing, we said it's the process of determining the cost. Uh, how are you going to determine the cost of the service? How are you going to determine the cost of the product you're producing? We also looked at cost accounting. Basically the methods, the activities to determine the profitability, cost control, we said it's about evaluating to determine whether you're making, you're going, you're achieving your objectives or not, and at the end of the day take the corrective action. And then the other thing we are going to be, the other term that we are going to come across frequently is the job costing whereby in a particular activity you need to be able to find out whether it's making a, you're making a profit or a loss and then you can be able to judge the profitability of each job that you're carrying out and that when you determine the profitability you can decide whether you're going to drop a particular activity or take it up then the other one is going to be batch costing whereby production is done in batches like in quantities or in sections so in, in a number of units so you are able to determine what is the optimum quantity of production for an economical batch basically when you're talking of batch costing that you want to make sure that you're always um, operating at the optimum at the most maximum level where you can increase profitability at a very low cost and you for example if you're handling stores or supplies you need to be able to determine what is the quantity of material you need to have at the store at a particular time to ensure that production runs efficiently with no hiccups and at the same time it is not in excess that it takes up into the costs of storage or costs of preservation so that's what basically batch costing is about so as we go ahead as we go through the cost these are some of the terminologies that we are going to be using frequently so the other thing we'd like to look at is what are the characteristics of costs or the elements of costs. Basically, when you're producing a product or a service, you'll need material, you'll need labor, and then there are other expenses that you're going to incur. 
And that's why you're seeing we have classified the elements of costs are basically material, labor, and the expenses. Now, in these three, they are again divided into two, either direct or indirect. So we need to understand what is the difference between a direct cost and an indirect cost. A direct cost is basically directly related or directly attributable to the good or service that you are producing. While an indirect cost is not directly related to the good or service that you're producing. So I can go back to the same example I was using. That for example, we have a bakery. And in this bakery, we are producing pastries. The raw materials that you're going to use in production of this pastry is basically the wheat flour, the oil, the sugar, okay? These are direct materials that will be needed there. What are some of the indirect materials that will be needed to provide to producing these pastries? An example would be probably the oven itself, that the oven is producing a variety of pastries and not that particular pastry, but for you to get that bread, for you to get that, uh, that cake, eh, you must have the wheat flour, and that wheat flour becomes a direct material. Then you have labor. Labor, again, will be divided into direct and indirect expenses. If we take an example of our bakery, when you want to distinguish the direct labor and the indirect labor, the direct person who is producing those pastries is the baker. So the baker provides direct labor to our process. If you're having a supervisor in that bakery, the supervisor is basically supervising the whole process. And probably the bakery is even attached to the supermarket. So the supervisor is supervising the whole organization. So you, we cannot attach the supervisor's work to the production in the bakery. So the supervisor in terms of labor becomes an indirect expense. So we need to be able to distinguish how would you be able to identify a direct expense and an indirect expense. Ex uh, indirect expense. The same thing to the expenses will also be divided into direct and indirect. So basically in summary here we are just saying that the elements of cost are basically material, labor and expenses and these three are again distinguished uh, are, either, are distinguished or classified under direct or indirect elements of cost. So just a summary of what I was explaining a material, the, sub the substance from which the finished product is made, is, not a, is known as the material. Then, we are being told that the direct, direct material is one that can be directly or easily identified to the product. You easily relate it to the product. So, for example, timber in furniture, clothes in the dress, and in our case, flour in the, baker, in the pastries or the cake. And then, indirect material is one that cannot be easily identified in the product. Indirect material, as far, as for example, will be given classification at factory level. You have oil, you have lubricants and consumables in the office level, printing and stationery, brooms and dusters. And then selling and distribution, you have packing materials, printing and stationery. Basically, what it means, why they indirect is because they are being used by a variety of products or services in that organization, and they are not being directly attributed to that particular commodity we are analyzing for its costs. That's basically what it means by indirect. And then what is labor? Labor is basically the human effort required to convert the material into the finished product. The human effort. So like for example, when I was beginning in classifying them, I said that the baker is the human effort to convert the wheat flour by kneading and baking into the pastries, our cake or bread. So that's what basically what labor is. And then again, we are saying that the labor is divided into direct labor and indirect labor. So direct labor, it can be easily related to the final product, while indirect labor cannot be easily uh, related to the product. So for example, for direct labor, wages paid to the carpenter. You remember in the first we were saying a direct material, we were saying the, the, uh, the furniture with the wood. So here the wages paid to the carpenter becomes the direct labor. The fee paid to the tailor becomes the direct labor. The wage we'll be paying the baker becomes our direct labor. And then in direct labor, we have said that it cannot be easily or conveniently identified or related to a particular job, product, or process. So in direct labor, for example, you are having the foreman's salary, that's like a supervisor, someone who cleans up the place to ensure things are running e efficiently, the manager's salary, the gatekeeper's salary. Like yes, they are contributing to the efficiency in the organization, but the work they are doing cannot be directly related to the products that they are producing. Then at the office level, you're having the accountant salary, the general manager salary, ETC, then the selling and distribution, the salesman salary, logistics, and the manager's salary. So at this step, uh, 
Now we have understood what cost is, cost accounting is, and then the elements of cost where we are having the labor, the material, and the expenses, and then we should be able to distinguish between what it means by a direct cost and an indirect cost. So we are having other expenses. For example, these are expenses other than material or labor. What are some of the direct expenses? excise duty paid, the taxes we are going to pay, like for example, if you are paying VAT, the royalty, the special hire charges, ETC, and then you are having indirect expenses that cannot be directly allocated to a particular job, process, or product. So what are examples of other expenses? At the factory level, you have rent, you have insurance, and then you have lighting. Then at the office level, you have office rent, office insurance, office lighting, and then sales and distribution. Examples are like advertising, showroom expenses, and DTC. These are just like other expenses that you'll need to be able to also distinguish. Are they direct costs or indirect costs? So one of the first things that we are going to be able to do as we go ahead is, determine, is, is, is trying to prepare a basic cost sheet. The work of a cost sheet basically is to show the total cost that is going to be incurred in producing a good or providing a service. So for example, the cost sheet, first of all, you have to classify and identify your direct material, your direct labor, and your direct expenses. So in our example, if I were to talk about the bakery that we are having, our direct material probably will be the raw materials, like the wheat flour, the oil, and everything. The direct labor will be our baker, the wages we are paying our baker. Direct expenses can be the electricity that we are going to use to run our ovens or such time. Then that, the direct labor, the direct material plus direct labor and direct expenses, when we add that up, it's going to give us our prime cost. So basically what we normally say is prime cost is equal to direct labor, direct material plus direct labor plus direct expenses. And then we are also going to have the factory overhead that will be given. And then we are going to get the factory over factory costs where we're going to have the office overheads. After that, we're going to sum up and get the cost of production. Then by the time the commodity or the service is reaching to the final consumer, they are always selling and distribution costs that we incur. And that this is where we are going to place them. And at the end of the day, we're going to get our cost of sales. Then from there, what we're saying at the beginning is that we need to determine one of the objectives of cost accounting is to determine the, prof the selling price of a commodity. To determine the selling price of a commodity is basically the total cost that we are going to incur in production, which is given by the cost of sales. Then we add our profit, which is given by the markup. Maybe we can say that we, we need to earn 20% profit, so it will be 20% of our total cost, and then we're able to get our sales. So that is basically how a cost sheet is going to look, at, look like. So as we go ahead again, we'll be able to also look, break down our raw materials. So again, the cost sheet format can also take the opening stock of raw materials plus purchases plus the carriage inwards, and then we get the closing stock of raw materials. And then we need the value of the materials consumed. When you are looking at the value of the materials consumed, you have the direct wages plus direct expenses. And then we have the prime cost, where you have the factory overhead costs and then opening stock of work in progress and closing stock of work in progress. So as we go ahead, we should be able, we'll be able to understand exactly what we mean by work in progress, exactly what we mean by the carriage inwards and, the, and how to break down the raw materials. But this is just a basic sheet that we are going to be using in the next topics that we are going to be handling. So this is a continuation of the factory cost. Um, where we are going to take into account the administrative overheads, then the cost of production, again, you have to look at the finished goods. The, when you look at the opening stock of finished goods and closing stock of finished goods, basically what happens is that when you're preparing a cost statement, you need to take into account the production period only. When you're taking into account the production period only, sometimes you may have commodities that were carried forward from the previous year. Commodities that were carried forward from the previous year cannot account for the costs that have been incurred in this year. And that's why we are saying that you have to add the opening stock of the finished goods because they were not sold in the previous year. They'll be sold in this year. And then we're going to detect the closing stock of the finished goods because this closing stock of finished goods basically has not been sold in this year. It will be sold in the coming year. And then we're going to get the cost of goods sold and then the cost of sales, we again add the profit and get the sales. 
So as we go ahead, these are terms that we are going to be looking at, the finished goods and how to handle the work in progress in the coming topics. So the next thing I want us to look at is the cost classification. Costs are classified in various ways and uh, it can be classified on the basis of nature, on the basis of their function, on the basis of direct or indirect. We had covered that briefly and then we can cover it in the form of variability and then controllability. Is it a cost that you can control or one that you cannot control? Whether it's a normal cost, normality, and then in terms of time, in terms of managerial and decision making. So when you're talking of the basis of nature, what do we basically mean? What type of cost is it or what is its source or emanating from? So in the basis of nature, we look at it in terms of material, in terms of labor and expenses. Remember we said that material is basically the material that is going to be used to produce that good or provide that service. And then the labor, the effort, the human effort being exerted to produce that good or service and the expenses that are going to be incurred. That's the basis of nature. And then the basis of function, uh, whether it is a manufacturing cost, a commercial cost, whether you're selling, selling an administration cost, manufacturing, if you're, you're in the factory and the cost that you're incurring, those will be manufacturing costs. And then on the basis of whether it is direct or indirect. Remember we had looked at the description of direct costs that they are directly attributable or related to the commodity being produced or the service being provided and the indirect cost you cannot directly relate it or it's not directly attributable to the good or the service being provided so that is the that that's the basis of classification and then the basis of variability you're having fixed cost variable costs and semi-variable cost so what is a fixed cost Basically, a fixed cost is a cost that does not change regardless of the level of production or output. So, for example, you have rented out a building and you're expected at the end of every month to pay rent for occupation of that place that is supposed to be your main place of production. Say it's your factory or it's your bakery. So, once you've gotten into an agreement with the owner or the landlord of that place, at the end of every month, this landlord will expect you to pay rent, say 50,000 per month, regardless of your level of output. So even if we produce 20 crates of, uh, of pastries or we produce 10 crates or 0 crates of pastries, at the end of the day our fixed cost is the rent that we pay to the landlord which is 50,000. So fixed cost basically means a cost that does not change regardless of the level of output. And then you're having variable cost. A variable cost is a cost that changes depending on the level of output. So for example, we are paying wages to our bakers or employees. And this wage is based on the quantity of production in that place. So the higher the quantity produced, the quantity of, of goods produced, the higher the wage we are going to pay, the lower the production, the lower the wage we are going to pay. Even if you're a sales agent and you're paid based on commission, commission basically means that I will pay you based on the number of sales that you make in a particular day of a particular period. So it's going to vary based on the amount of output. That's what we are calling a variable cost. And then you have semi-variable cost. Semi-variable costs have the characteristics of both fixed cost and variable cost. So you need to understand what is a fixed cost, what is a variable cost, and then what is a semi-variable cost. Then the other one is that you have on the basis of control controllability. When you look at controllability is basically which costs can you influence and which costs can you not influence. So we are having controllable costs and uncontrollable costs. And then on the basis of normal costs, we are having the normal costs and abnormal costs. Most of the time when we'll be doing process costing, we are going to be looking at this. That normal costs are costs that you can anticipate. And say so that these are costs I'm sure I'm going to be able to to incur and this is how I'll handle them and abnormal cost most of the time they are costs that you have not anticipated then we'll have to make a decision on how we are going to cater for them in the process of costing. And then in the process of financial accounts you're having capital costs, revenue costs, deferred revenue costs. Capital cost is basically you're incurring a cost to buy an item or a service that is going to lead to the production of more goods and services but revenue cost is for the 
uh, the daily in occurrences or, or the normal cost that you incur in order to run your organization. This is what we call called revenue costs. And then the deferred are the ones that we are going to be postponing. Then you have on the basis of time, historical costs, and then you're having predetermined costs. Historical costs are basically costs that are in the past. And then predetermined costs are costs that you can be able to determine that in the future, this is what these are the costs I expect to incur. So you remember that when you're doing financial accounting, one you are basically dealing with the historical costs. Then the other classification is on the basis of planning and controlling. You're having your budgeted costs and your standard costs. So budgeted costs is basically you sit down and plan and determine these are the costs we expect to incur in this particular period. And then standard costs are predetermined already that there is a process you go on to determine the standard costs. Then what happens is that they are going to help us to be able to evaluate in the process of decision making. And then you're having a classi classification on the basis of managerial decision making. So you're having the marginal costs, the out of pocket costs, the sunk costs, opportunity costs, the replacement costs, costs that you can avoid, costs that you cannot avoid, the relevant and irrelevant costs, and the differential costs. So as we go on, these are terms that we are going to be using frequently. So, and then um, the next thing is the terms that are used in cost accounting. What is a cost unit? A cost unit is basically uh, the particular commodity or service that we are providing that we can attach a cost to it. And then the cost center will be the, for example, the department, the place where the costing is going to take place, where we can accumulatively put in the costs and determine the particular cost of the good or the service. Cost estimation is basically just trying to determine what cost are we going to incur, what will be the price of this, and then cost ascertainment, the cost determination, cost allocation, Cost allocation, basically, you realize in an organization it has different departments. And, for example, if we were to pay our electricity bill, we'll pay the electricity bill for the whole organization. Yet again, each department contributes in a variable way to this particular electricity bill. So what happens is that we should be able to allocate the costs to the particular department and determine where exactly it relates to. And then we are going to apportion. Apportion basically means we need to divide this cost that has been incurred among the different departments or the cost units. And then we have the cost reduction and the cost control, as we had earlier discussed. So what are the methods of costing? We realize that as we go through these methods of costing, each of them is a topic on their own. So we go through the job costing, the contract costing, batch costing, process costing, and then the unit costing, and then operating costing and the multiple costing. So each of them will be a topic. For example, when you look at the job cost, you're saying in a particular job, how will you be able to determine its total cost? In contract costing, you're given a tender, and the tender is not paid at the end when the job is completed, but it is paid in bits or in stages. So we should be able to determine at stage one, what is the total cost that has been incurred, what payments should we make. Then in the batch costing, we said is when you are producing uh, goods in, in bulk or in batches or in units, so we are able to determine the cost and divide it among them. Process costing is whereby you are producing goods in stages, and in each stage you should be able to determine what value has been added to that commodity or service, and after value has been added, what is its price at that point before we take it to the second stage and the third stage when we are going to be getting our final commodities. That's basically what process costing is. So as we go ahead in the, in the forthcoming topics, all this will be handled separately. And also the costing, the uniform costing, the marginal costing, we'll be able to compare marginal costing and absorption costing standard costing, the direct costing, and historical costing. I think uh, this is just a summary of what we are expected to be covering. Uh, as we go ahead, what I would advise is that first of all, you are able to determine uh, a question would be distinguish uh, between financial accounting and cost accounting, and then we should be able to take off from there. I think we can stop there until the next class. Yeah, we can stop there until the next class. So we have come to the end of our first topic, that is the introduction to cost accounting. We've been able to understand what cost accounting is, what is the purpose of cost accounting. 
and we've been able to look at some of the terminologies that we'll be using frequently and the classification of costs. So we have realized that even in the introductory bit, and I've been mentioning that, each of them is going to be a topic on their own, so it will need a lot of consistency for you to be able to understand what is going on. So thank you for being present and your attention. Till next time.